Good afternoon. I'm here to talk about Promimic. Uh, Promimic, uh, we are taking you on a growth journey, both as a company, but also what we do, we are enhancing bone growth in implants. And this quarter, we also uh, validated a process where we can have soft tissue attachment of soft implants that we uh, grow. I'm the CEO of the company, and my background is in pharma and medtech for many years. So the company is listed on First North Growth Market here in Stockholm. Uh, we are based in Gothenburg or Mundal, for those of you who know the difference. Uh, we also have a sales office in Austin, Texas, and we very recently moved into GoCo Health Innovation City, which is a a really interesting uh, life science cluster in Gothenburg. We are a lot of life science company based there and is definitely a very interesting place uh, for us to be. Uh, our vision is to become the leading partner with orthopedic and dental and now other companies in the sports med area when it comes to uh, improving patient outcome in surgical procedure using nanotechnology. And our product is something that is not seen by the naked eye. You cannot see if an implant is modified with our surface modification or not. So it's 20 nanometers thin. You can have 5,000 of our surface modification in a hair. So it's really, really thin. And what do we do? Yeah, we create a super hydrophilicity on implants. Illustrated here in this video, the right hand side is with HA nano surface, which is the product we have on the market right now. And you can see if this were blood, it's water dyed with ink, it climbs against gravity up onto the implants and starts the healing process right away. So this is kind of a kickstart where healing of implants, this is a 3D printed implant, and this is usually what customers say is a wow effect. We fill the whole implant with blood and healing starts immediately. This is a normal trauma screw, which is used in millions every year, and we can improve the healing phase and getting patients back to life faster. This is peak which is an inert plastic, very often used in spinal cord, uh, spinal implants. Spinal implants and dental implants is our biggest market so far. And we have also, like I said, been able this quarter to validate a process where we can modify soft implants, being meshes or sutures. Our technology is known. It's well established. We have uh, two master files with FDA, one on, uh, on titanium and one on peak. The question from the regulatory bodies is not if it works or not. It's usually what type of substrate are we using it on? What type of implants is it used on? The spine, which you see a small implant where this doctor holds in the retractor, it's our biggest segment, but we're also moving into other areas as well. And we have 30 preclinical studies and three clinical studies that very nicely show that this technology works. So we are in the dental play space. We are in the in in spinal fusion. We also used in in uh, cardiothoracic fixation when you open do open heart surgery. And these are an, ex are an example of the companies that we work with. And the two largest customers of us are is ATEC, which is a spine company, and SIN, which is a Brazilian dental company. And those companies in combination are the fastest growing in their space right now. So what we are doing, we are adding differentiation in a marketplace at the same time as we help the companies, our customers, to add value to their customers, the doctors, and the next step, also the patient. So this is how it looks like when a low temperature processing method that I mentioned is used to comp 
to complete the picture of the video. This is a suture that you can see that you start the healing phase, initiate that earlier, but we can also see that we see less bacteria on the implant, which could be a secondary effect. So the business model that we use is a licensing model. So we license our technology, we produce a coating liquid, which later is applied on the implants, and we also provide the processing. We sign a license deal, we get a yearly license fee, sometimes also an upfront milestone. We develop that optimize the implant surface together with customers, and we get paid for that. We create an SOP, which is called Standard Operating Procedure, which is a recipe exactly how you modify and optimize the surface of this implant. And that SOP is then delivered to NPI, which is a joint venture we have in the US with Danko Medical. And there we process and we get paid for the processing uh, setup. Later, when the implant is sold, we also get a royalty on sold drugs. Sorry, sold implants, sold products. NPI, to NPI and to other customers, we also sell the coating liquid if they prefer to do this process in-house. So that's kind of the, the building blocks of our revenue streams. So what are the market drivers? First of all, it is product differentiation in the marketplace. Younger and younger patients are getting implants. Historically, it was old men and old women who got a new knee or a new hip. Today, we see patients at the age of 45 getting implants because of obesity or overweight, especially in, in the US, which is our main focus market. Cemented technologies have a lifetime of about 20 to 25 years. And if you're 45 or 50, you will be put on the operating table again when you're 75. And that's age also increase the risk. So, Companies and the healthcare system is going away from cemented uh, technologies over to non-cemented. And that's where our technology really comes in handy to be able to improve osseointegration and healing. We can also see that the number of elderly patients is increasing. That patient pool is increasing and they also get worn out uh, joints. And that's also an area where our surface modification enhance healing. Last but not least was the video that I sh showed you that just said was a wow effect, 3D printed implants. So new technology is emerging into the orthopedic field and these companies are uh, wanting to improve healing even there. And we are one of the few companies that can modify 3D printed implant and other type of porous structures without clogging the pores where the bone cells should grow into and heal. So the foundation for our growth is number of implants approved for clinical use that would gives us the royalty that you see on the red bar or curve. On the blue curve is the license agreements. That's where the license we have with customers. So what you see, we have today we have 18 customers and we have 46 products on the market with our partners. Our technology is used there. So right now we are focusing on scaling the business the best we can. So a little bit about the financials. We are on the stock market. We had a uh, Turnover last quarter of about 12 million. Uh, we still have a negative cash flow, but we foresee that the cash flow will be positive in the beginning of 25, moving into profit, profitable business during 2025. Uh, this is the category sales. Products and services sold are our coating liquid and our development. And the blue part is the processing and the gray part here is licensing and royalty fees. And we have a nice increase, especially when you look at the license and royalty fees, which is the bread and butter of our business. We also compare rolling 12 month growth and we see a nice uh, development of uh, that part. Time is running short, so I would like just to come back on what are our objectives a little bit longer term. We have an objective to 
have a turnover of 100 million SEC by the end of 2026, and our margins will be around 40%. So we will not be the biggest company out there, but we will be a very profitable com uh, company. So the growth plan we have up to 2026, in the morning or right after lunch, we talk about exit uh, strategies. We don't have an exit strategy. We have a strategy to grow a very healthy, profitable company. The IPO we did in 22 unable, uh, enabled us to get money to build on that growth journey that we are in right now. So after that, we have entered a new business model. We have put more sales feet on the ground in the US. We are developing our relationship with existing and new customers. We moved into a new facility that enable us to improve our efficiency when it comes to product development and customer product development. We also will increase our processing capacity in the US. We'll both increase capacity where we are located now in uh, uh, Warsaw, Indiana, and we will have a second site, second source site in the US as well. And we're also focusing on uh, new market development. Thank you. Thank you. So we have some questions for you. Thank you for your presentation. Thank you. Oh, I like it when uh, people go into the concrete stuff. Can you give us a concrete example of how the market demands align with your technology? Yes. For instance, I can take a really life e uh, example with Curitiba, which is one of our bigger uh, customers. They had a 3D printed uh, spinal implant was first on the market and they wanted to improve fusion, which is bone on growth on this implant. We were one of the few companies in the world that could modify that implant and it now shows very nice bone growth in CT scans and x-rays today when they have it. So they are, that implant is used in over 2000 patients right now today. So it's really concrete. We help people and doctors, patients, get their function back. Mm -hmm. So what do you need to be able to scale up um, and like your growth pace? Our growth pace will be, uh, if you do the math, it's quite simple. If we want to get to 100 million in by the 2026, you can calculate on the back of an envelope what we need to do. For us, it's getting improving and expanding our business with existing customers and get three to four customer, new customers per year. Mm. That's what we need to get there. Uh, yeah, and what do you need to get there, you know, to have these three new customers, do you think? Oh, yeah, we need to meet new customers, be in congresses, uh, uh, dial in and focus on those companies that we uh, evaluate having a good uh, use of our technology. We have in the US targeted 146 companies where we'll see a strategic fit between our technology and their implant. Mm. I will ask you to show a little bit more of your lovely self to oh, the okay. camera yeah. because they, they love to have a whole face. Oh, okay. Oh, your profile is so nice. <laughs> um, do you see opportunities in larger limb osseo integration? I really need uh, reading glasses. Oh, okay. <laughs> uh, yes, we do. We can help companies both in the hip and knee area uh, with this. However, hip and knee or especially hip implants had, don't have that really uh, a big problem with uh, implant loosening because of the pressure of the body for the hips. However, the acetabulary cups on the other side of the implant, that is an area that needs to be improved and we are doing uh, research in that area. So yeah, we will hopefully pretty soon be in the large joint as well. Mm -hmm. That's an answer for you. Uh, are there any other questions in the room? No, in that case, thank you so much thank for you. your presentation and asking our questions. Thank you very much.